All right, so here's my limited penny plane prop. You can see it's just a regular prop. We have tissue tubes and the blades plug in there and then you adjust the angle, all right? And now I'm trying another type of prop, which was uh, introduced by Bill Gowen, okay? It's, he, he goes as old Bill on Hip Pocket. And basically what this uses is 420, uh, 0 .0 20 inch carbon fiber rods glued onto a 16 square balsa and then you just kind of shaves the ends off a little bit. It was actually pretty easy to make. The part I was wondering about is how much difficulty was I going to have sliding in the blades and setting the angle and actually that worked out pretty good. Okay, so I did it a little different from old Bill. I should say for each rod, so you glue each rod to the center of the 16 square and what I did is I I used just a dot of this gelled CA on each end, because CA is heavy, but just, a, and the thing is that sticks quick. So then I held it in position just for a few seconds and you're set. And then I flowed some uh, Ambroid on it, okay, along, because I like to use that and it's light. And actually it's not Ambroid, I've been using indoor free flight supplies. It's a cellulose base, it's the same thing. This is very nice glue actually. And that's what I used on the rest of it. So I did that for each rod and then I put in the center wire and again I ambroid that when everything looked nice and good position I put about a, a good drop of a thin CA on it and that kind of soaks in the balsa and sort of solidified it all up all right so then I slipped in the blades and what you do is you first you get it on there's usually one that's lying kind of flat and so I glued that first now here I didn't want to use any CA so I just did ambroid and you just kind of hold it in place for, you know, 10 seconds or something and it'll set. And uh, it actually was a lot easier than I thought. It came out nice. And then I found, uh, you know, looked on the bottom and there was one that was flat. And so I glued that on the top. Old Bill mentions he does this. I just pushed it up slightly against the tip of the other one. That was pretty easy. And then the same thing on the bottom like that. And there you go. So this is pretty good. Now the idea here is you can see you got those. So it should flex a little more. And I've just been feeling it. It feels like it's a little bit more flexible. Okay. Now the other thing that's uh, come up here is, uh, you know, uh, reading through uh, some of old Bill's comments is he said, sometimes if you want more flex, you can snip off some of these. He snipped off down the two. And that got me thinking, because I'm flying basically in category one conditions. You really want the most flare possible. I haven't tried this, we're gonna find out and see how much this flares. But in the interim, I don't see the point of snipping off, okay? So what I did is I made another one, but this one only has two. And I, I did it on the sides because it looked easy to position the blades this way. And the same thing again, I glued each one, little dot of CA to hold them, but using, you know, Ambroid the rest of the time or the other cement. And then when it was all done, I hit it with a drop of CA and I think we're ready to go. So now I'll put this in there and it'll be the same thing again. I'll glue one of them and it looked good. You know, you would think, well, you got to close that space up, but not really. I mean, uh, you know, when you, you put the balls in at an angle, each one is pretty much almost sitting flat on the blade. So you're not going to have to move it much. Okay. And, and you can, if you want to. So this will make a more flexible uh, prop and I'm going to make this. And um, then I'm going to test them both. We'll see how that goes. This should be interesting. Okay, so I had three clean flights this week at the Armory. All right, it wasn't full winds, but they went up about 25 feet. They were all over six minutes. And I didn't hit anything. And I had to do a little steering, but not much. So I really learned a lot. So I'm going to share that with you. Uh, and I really learned through, you know, the RPM. Let me show you this first. I always keep records when I go out. And the important things, well, I have the motor length, the weight, the max turns I got at the max torque. Now, here's the four important things you really need. The launch turns, the launch torque, the turns at landing, and the flight time. Once you've got that, you can calculate the RPM, right? You're going to look at how many turns you use, subtract the launch minus the landing, and then divide by the total time, and then multiply by 60, and you'll get the RPM, okay? So I always keep records like this. And here's what I found this week. So first I started with the four uh, spar one, you know, the four carbon fiber prop I showed you last time. And it was nice flight, all right? It was like 618, went up about 25 feet, but here's the thing. I know from, uh, 
my previous flights, my best flights in the Armory with the limited penny plane have been seven minutes to, you know, 7.15, something like that, 7.30, I think I hit. And there I know the RPM is usually around 155 to 160, okay? So with the four, I had set the pitch a little lower because I thought it was gonna flare. So the regular prop, which is sitting right here, this has a 24 inch pitch, okay? And that was pretty good, I was happy with that. So I thought for the flaring prop, I'll set it a little lower, I set it to around 22 and uh, you know, but when I got the flight in and I computed the RPM, it was 185. It actually went up and that told me it's too stiff. It's not flaring. I lowered the pitch and I got a higher RPM, okay? So next I have flight, I actually did two flights uh, with the, uh, you know, the two carbon fiber one. I showed you that last time as well. And by the way, all these flights were like 0.3 torque. I know from before, 0.3 is fine. 0.35 gets me to the girder. 0.4 or more is kiss of death. You're, you're too high. So that's what I was, the other thing I was looking at. So I actually got two flights in with the two spar, you know, carbon fiber uh, spar one. And there they were both about the RPM. So that one is also set at 22, but there the RPM for the whole flight was 150. So I went, aha, that's, that's flaring. No question, that's flaring, okay? Because without the flare, it would be up around 180. So the next part was I wanted to see, can I, is it gonna help me with the burst? This is kind of the whole point. I can, you know, if I could get a little higher torque and get more winds in and have the flare kill the burst a little bit so it doesn't climb too high, then you could, you know, you get more flight time. So I wound it up to 0.4, and unfortunately, this is up in the girders, all right? I'm, thank goodness I got it back. All right, so now there are two options when I was thinking about this. Uh, well, one is forget the four, all right? It doesn't have enough flare. So I'm going over to the two, which is nice because I like the way that works anyway. And uh, But it didn't flare enough to keep me out of the girders, so two options. One is I could increase the pitch, okay? and uh, see if that helps. The other option is maybe I could even go for more flare, higher flare, even though I don't know, it seemed like this flared enough, but we'll see, these are the two options. So I implemented both these options, let me show you. Now the other thing was, I was hoping I could save the four one and the two one, just save them by removing, and that worked out great. I'm really glad I didn't use much CA, mostly Ambroid. I wasn't sure about the middle section because I did hit that with a drop of CA. Um, but fortunately, I was able to get it out, all right? Uh, in, a, in other words, I soaked it good with CA and I was a, actually able to snap the other ones loose. So now you'll see, this is the two, you see? This has got, or is that the one? I, I need my glasses. <laughs> this is the two. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is the two, okay? So this was originally the four. So I was able to remove the, two that were on the uh, side, apparently. And, you know, I kept these, uh, this one in particular, where some of them were nice and flat. These type one, type, top ones were nice and flat. So this is two, let me hold it like there. You can see this is with the two spar. But what I did here is I increased the pitch. So the pitch now on this is 24. I'm hoping it flares to at least 26. So that's the first option, okay? Increase the pitch, keep the two but increase the pitch. So we're gonna try that this week. I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna see what happens. Now here's the other idea I came up with, which was to increase the flare. Could I actually do one spar? And the answer is yes. Here you go. You can see what I did. I snipped it here and then I soaked it with CA and I was able to cleanly remove it. Same on the other side, okay? And I kept the top ones because those lie nice and flat. I should mention, and this also goes with the other one, after I removed the spar, I let it dry. Then I soaked this top and I did one blade at a time. So I soaked this lightly. It doesn't, it not, it doesn't come off. You can actually twist it. You can feel it, it, it's moving. And I, so I could set the pitch, okay? So on this one, which was originally 22, this was the, the four, I made it two, but I also increased the pitch up to 24. So now I have a two, Spar, 24 inch pitch prop. We're gonna see how that does this week. So that increases the pitch. Here, I kept it at 22 inches, 
but I reduced the number of spars to one on each side. As you can see, I'm really curious. This might have too much flare. Who knows? You know, we'll find out this week, okay? So I'm gonna test both of those this week. And again, if I could just get a couple of clean flights, like I did here, and I was really able to see what was going on, uh, then I'll be able to report back and tell you how this worked. Which one is better? Is it better to increase the pitch or should I increase the flare? I don't know, we'll find out. Climbing. Let's see what happens. I think it's flaring all right. Jesus, so even with one spar, you still go up. drifting too much it's a little a little breezy once you get up well I'm not going in the girders this is good <laughs> let's see okay get some data here to see what's happening Yeah, it's looking good. That's only one carbon fiber spar, that's it. Just one now. So I'll have to see what the RPM is. And also how it handles the higher torque. This was pretty low. All right, I, yeah, it's good. I, I'm gonna torque it up the next flight. Let's see what happens. Right, I'm gonna kill this for now. Okay, I had some really good flying this week and I got some good data. So now I have a pretty good idea what's going on. So I, you know, I made the two carbon fiber spar prop, but I actually waited on that. Uh, that one just has slightly higher pitch. That was the one that was, I was flying last time. I was more anxious to try the one spar there, okay? And that was fantastic. So I just started right with that. And I kind of went up slow. I tried 0.3 and you could tell it's flaring. It didn't flounder around. And uh, I slowly raised it up 0 0.37, 0 0.38. I was getting over six minutes at this point. And it kept it down below 30 feet. Uh, the final test was I just gave it the point about 0 0.41. Here's my actual data here. And, uh, you know, 20 inch motor and so on. And that went up just 30 feet. It was below the lights. It was fantastic. It was probably closer to 28 feet. Okay. And it had a nice flare on the burst. It almost stalled. And this is what I want to see in a very low ceiling. So it did seven and a half minutes. That's the best time I've had in the armory so far. And when I calculated the prop RPM, it was 147. I think that's just about perfect. If anything, I might try. So right now, the low pitch, uh, it's at uh, about 22. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's flaring to at least 24, 26. It looks perfect. It's keep, So I was actually able to use a heavier motor and get away with a little higher torque. And it still kept it down below the girders. All right. So that's what I'm going to go for. I would recommend... The four spar prop doesn't really flare. Maybe if you're using much bigger rubber, all my rub is under an eighth, but it doesn't flare. But the two does. If you were flying category two or three, let's say a 50 foot or more, I'd probably try the two and see how that is. That does flare as my data showed. It slowed the prop down. But for a low ceiling like category one or where you got to keep it, you know, under 30 feet, I thought the single spar worked great. I'm really looking forward to working with it some more. I mean, there's other variations. This has a single 0.020 inch rod. I could try 
10 inch rods, but I think I'll save that to next fall. Okay, and I'll do some more experimenting. But the good news is I'm really happy with this. I think it works really nice. And um, I'm gonna keep working with this.